think last time we talked, maybe it was the time before that, earlier in the week, uh, we discussed the, the Israeli uh, missile attack that killed three, uh, two senior and one maybe a little bit less than senior Hamas uh, officials um, in the Gaza Strip, uh, in, in the south of Gaza Strip, southwest. Uh, but as a consequence, uh, the, at least the Palestinian authorities claim that somewhere between 35 and 45 civilians were also killed, uh, that there was some kind of explosion associated with this. Uh, tents uh, went on fire and, and a lot of people were killed. And if you remember, I criticized Netanyahu for apologizing or for, for claiming that it was a tragic mistake. Uh, the, the accusations against Israel at the time were that they used massive bombs, big one-ton bombs, that they were bombing an area that was actually a, uh, a, you know, an area where they had told Gazans to flee to because it would be safe. Uh, they were bombing an area filled with uh, tents, uh, with civilians that's supposed to be, again, in a safe zone uh, for civilians that had evacuated from various parts of Gaza. Well, people have analyzed what actually happened. And shockingly, surprisingly, mm, that's not the story at all, it turns out. And, and you don't have to, but, you know, the, 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 actually the Israeli, uh, Israel actually released uh, some audio of uh, two, I guess, uh, Palestinians in Gaza talking and describing what actually happened. And then later, others did analysis, including uh, CNN, not exactly a friend of Israel, did an analysis. And this is the conclusion they came to. Israel actually used two smart, uh, relatively small bombs to take out a, uh, a uh, facility being used by Hamas leadership uh, in which uh, these three senior officials uh, were in, and they all were killed. Two small bombs, much, 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 a quarter of the size of the one-ton, many one-ton bombs that was claimed. Two, I think, 250-kilo bombs, so that's quite a bit less than a ton, um, uh, that were dropped and were very effective at destroying this facility. Shrapnel, though, from this attack, shrapnel, it, it appears... Uh, traveled quite a big distance, about one kilometer away. This facility that Israel attacked directly was one kilometer, one kilometer away from the tent city, the, the, the tents, the, the, the place which Israel had declared a safe zone. So they were not bombing the safe zone. The safe zone was actually quite a distance away. It was a kilometer away. But it appears that shrapnel from the attack um, uh, uh, you know, traveled that distance and hit a ammunition depot or a fuel depot or some combination of fuel and ammunition of Hamas, which was placed, guess where? Right in the midst of the tents. That exploded, and indeed that explosion is what led to the civilian deaths in uh, the tents encampment. It was not Israel's bombs. It was ammunition that Hamas purposefully keeps close to civilian populations so that Israel doesn't attack it directly. And in this case, it got accidentally ignited. It blew up. Civilians died. Uh, and uh, that is the nature of war. I mean, every, no matter how they would have died, they would have been the fault of Hamas. No matter how they would have died, it would have been the fault of those who initiated force and those who hide behind the civilians. But here it's literally the fault of Hamas for keeping, keeping this uh, so close. Now, how shrapnel flew up a kilometer, I don't know, CNN analysis. Um, it, it could very well be that this facility that housed uh, the Hamas senior people also had ammunition, and uh, that the explosion there, uh, the explosion from that, uh, you know, involved significant amounts of shrapnel, uh, and it was a much bigger explosion than just these two smart bombs um, uh, hitting, hitting a, a, a building. Uh, but the reality is that the facility that was bombed, the tent city that blew up and killed the civilians, 
the distance between the two, and you can find satellite photos of this online, is about a kilometer. So I guess the alternative to that is if it wasn't shrapnel, then Hamas just set it off in order to kill its own civilians, in order to gain a PR knock against Israel. Wouldn't put it beyond them, but that's at least not the story being told right now. Uh, anyway, not Israel's fault, Hamas's fault. Uh, you know, Israel, in my view, uh, you know, uh, sadly and unfortunately, takes unbelievable care, I, I would say, to the point of self-sacrifice, self-sacrificial care in not harming civilians, self-sacrificial care in making sure civilians are not harmed, in only attacking, uh, you know, uh, officials of Hamas, militants, men of Hamas fighting age, uh, in trying to avoid civilians, that is impossible. And indeed, as we've seen, fewer, as, as many people have reported, fewer civilians are dying in this conflict than any other urban warfare conflict ever, particularly if you take into account the amount of explosives being, uh, so per kilo of explosives sent into the Gaza Strip, fewer civilians are dying than in any conflict in history. Nobody cares. It's genocide. You know, 36,000 people, of which probably at least about somewhere from 40 to 50 percent of um, uh, uh, Hamas, uh, a bunch of them uh, beyond that are male, uh, therefore could be Hamas, uh, uh, could be uh, late teens and classified as children, still be Hamas. So a, a good estimate is well about 50 percent. Uh, male and uh, Hamas fighting age, uh, so the civilian the civilian casualties are relatively low in the you know in the in the teens, uh, teens of thousands. But uh, if you think about the conflict in Syria, where hundreds of thousands of civilians died, hundreds of thousands, did anybody care? Has anybody condemned the Syrian regime or the uh, Putin regime, the Russian regime? which uh, carpet bombed whole civilian areas, uh, destroying whole cities and killing thousands upon thousands of people indiscriminately for nothing over what. Uh, so, uh, yeah, surprise, surprise. Israel is going to be attacked, uh, vilified, no matter what it does, no matter how careful it is. Um, and by being as careful as it is, it's extending the war, making it worse, making giving its enemies more and more opportunities uh, to go after it. All right, some other uh, stories from Gaza. Uh, Israel now has control uh, over the entire what's called the Philadelphia uh, corridor. The, I don't know why it's called the Philadelphia corridor. I have to I have to look that up. But uh, this is the corridor that basically goes along the Egyptian border. So it's the entire Gaza Egypt border. It goes from the border with Israel to the Mediterranean Sea, and Israel basically has control of the entire, uh, the entire border. Uh, of course, as it has gained control, it has found dozens of tunnels, tunnels that go under the Egyptian um, border, tunnels that have openings in Egypt, uh, tunnels that were used, uh, as, used to smuggle in uh, people and to smuggle in uh, weapons, Hopefully, they haven't been used to smuggle out hostages and smuggle out senior Hamas uh, people, but uh, certainly these tunnels have been used to smuggle things in. Um, now, maybe it is possible that Israel is making all this up, and it is, it is possible that they, they are, uh, you know, this is just a, 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 a delusion, uh, that they're just pretending to find these tunnels, because the reality is that... Um, uh, that Egypt is claiming that these tunnels do not exist. Egypt's official position is there are no tunnels, no tunnels uh, between uh, Israel and, uh, and Egypt. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe Israel's wrong, maybe boots on the ground are wrong, maybe those videos of uh, it's all wrong. Um, uh, maybe it's all wrong. Anyway, uh, there you go. It's um, Israel has control of the whole thing. I mean, I, I find it bewildering. Oh, and let me know two things, right? One, I find it bewildering that Israel didn't do this in the first day of the war. That is, it seems to me 
that this should have been the first priority, cut the Gaza Strip off from Egypt, cut it off from its supply chain, uh, it, destroy all the tunnels leading into Egypt. That should have been number one. I don't understand strategically why they went for, the, uh, for northern Gaza instead of going for southern Gaza to begin with. If they'd gone for southern Gaza, they would have basically had them surrounded. So I don't know. They were afraid of Egypt's response. I, I just don't know. I, uh, you know, uh, I don't know who in the Israeli military came up with these plans. Maybe they were convinced that all the hostages were in the north, that Sinwar and the leadership were in the north, and, and they could capture them quickly and get it over with, and the war would be over. I just don't know, but it seems to me, as an amateur, former Israeli military, but still an amateur, that um, it would have made a lot more sense to go to go, uh, uh, to go south first. To, uh, well, at least cut them off at Gaza, then split the Gaza Strip into south and north, and then deal with whatever you have to deal. But have, have these clear divisions and have uh, uh, and eliminate the option of escaping into of, of escaping into Egypt on the one hand, but also bringing weapons in from Egypt. So, I, I just don't know. I, I you know maybe it's altruism, maybe it's incompetence. Uh, I, I fear given. So much of what's happened uh, from October 7th, the day of, to now, that it might just be incompetence. It might just be bad planning. It might, might be that they thought they could get it over with uh, in the north. Uh, second point I wanted to make about this is note, and, I, and I'll keep repeating this because it, it, I think it's so important that all of us develop a real skepticism about what we hear from military experts and what we hear from defense officials, unnamed defense officials in the Pentagon or in whatever in the government. But remember, before Israel went into Rafa, uh, over and over and over and over again, how we were told how difficult this would be, how many civilians would die, how this was really a catastrophe. Israel couldn't evacuate a million people. There's no way they could take the Philadelphia corridor without uh, antagonizing the Egyptians and without killing a lot of civilians. This was impossible. This was not doable. Um, indeed, before Israel ever entered Gaza, we were told Israel is going to suffer thousands of casualties. Urban warfare, they're not ready for it. They don't know what they're doing. The Israeli military is incompetent. They're so pathetic. Uh, the Americans know how to do this. Uh, you know, Israel, if you remember, before they went into Rafah, Israel had to have these meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting with the Biden and, you know, senior defense officials to convince them that, no, this plan would work. As if the Americans are what? The gold standard for military operations, really? Uh, it, it really is striking. And, and, of course, on the networks, you heard the same thing. It really is striking, at least from what we are hearing on our side, right? I'm not in sight. I'm not in the Pentagon. I don't know what the generals actually think. From what we're hearing, how absolutely incompetent, how little they understand, how little they know, the American military, uh, about what happens in Gaza, how Gaza functions, and what the capabilities of the Israeli military are, what they actually are, and how pessimistic and negative and everything's impossible, everything is not doable, everything is going to cause a crisis, everything is going to be the end of the world, uh, that so many military uh, experts, uh, uh, so many military experts have. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it is, uh, it is, this is American military experts. They don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I don't think it's just American, it's military experts overall. Israeli military experts had, you know, were, were much more accurate on Israeli television in terms of their predictions about what would happen. Um, if anything, they overestimated some of the abilities of the Israeli army to end this quickly and decisively.